Hello, and thanks very much for talking to us. I gather that you've had your own experience of the treatment from the Titirangi Rudolph Steiner School. Yeah, we have. Our family's really sorry about the situation and admire your sticking to your guns. Most parents who have been or are in your position are too reluctant to stand up and rock the boat for fear of being branded as a troublemaker. But nobody has anything to say about the actual issues. Well, we've done it too, for the best of intentions around some issues, and found ourselves marginalised in the parent community. When was that? That was some years ago. Parents don't seem to like these kinds of truths being told or being made to look at things that make them uncomfortable. We have found that to be true. Celebrating what's great about the school is good, and there are many good things, but at what cost if we ignore issues of justice and truth? I have to say that it's also a very common immigrant experience at the school and you soon learn that shut up and don't rock the boat is the overriding culture of the day. Get over it, she'll be right. I'm aware of a whole list of people who have had run-ins with the school in the last few years. Not all, but the vast majority being immigrants. And was most of this to do with bullying or other issues? Well, largely, yes. We, we fully support your concern around bullying. And after our own similar concern some years ago, we also offered to arrange for parents to help out supervising at break time. The offer was refused and seen as unnecessary. Apparently, nothing has changed. It's amazing, isn't it? An understaffed school turning down the offer of free help. What all these exclusions demonstrate is that the way the school is run, there's no process of appeal, no governance board that can be asked to review the decision and to protect the rights of parents. The college has vested itself with both the management and the governance functions that in any healthy organisation are split, because you can't be both player and referee, except at Tidurangi Steiner's school. But surely intelligent parents can't put up with such a situation for long? Many parents over many years have seen this and tried to work with the school around this issue, and it has at times ended up as a power struggle between parents and teachers largely because the teachers refused to be accountable to anyone but themselves. We were part of a whole group of parents, most of them have left now, who tried to work with college around these things. Progress was made, but whenever we mentioned transparency and accountability, it was like we just hit a brick wall. Well, we can relate to that. This issue doesn't appear to be fully appreciated by parents, unless they end up like your family and it's too late. And until they do, and until parents are prepared to take a bigger picture look at the school, this gross, unfair anomaly will continue. Goodness knows we gave it our best shot. We're only some of many professional and well-intentioned people who have got burned out wrestling with college around Titirangi Steiner School governance issues. It doesn't sound very professional. Well, the way the trust was recently configured, it's just a property management group. It's not a governance group. It technically has the ability to sell the school resources, fire teachers and close the school, but in actual truth, when the last trust investigated these options, they found that these options couldn't be followed, even if it wanted to. It's a toothless sham. Uh, It's truly a basket case, and it's designed as such in the Constitution, which the college protect, and no one can change. Well, how could things change so that parents could have confidence that the structure of the school was democratic? So that if there were problems, say, to do with bullying, for example, that they would be sorted rather than the victims of the bullying being thrown out, as has happened to our little girl. It needs a parent group calling for these changes and nothing less, and that needs majority support by parents. It's amazing that there isn't one. Until this can happen, the school will continue with its autocratic, pseudo-spiritual arrogance and be accountable only to itself. That's why the teachers oppose integration and, in fact, even sabotaged efforts some years ago when it was an option. As an integrated school, they would have to demonstrate accountability for their decisions and allow parent involvement in real governance, and they couldn't randomly just exclude families. Thanks very much for talking to us. We'll be putting this video up on the site uh, in the struggle to get our little girls reinstated into the school and to try and create a, a more democratic situation there. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. At least your website provides an opportunity to see the stuff that they want hidden. And you're open to interviewing anyone about this, aren't you? For or against democracy? Yes, we've extended an open invitation to anyone at the school to come and do an interview with us. 
we can't go there because we'll get arrested. I don't think they've got an actual position, otherwise they wouldn't be too scared to come and be interviewed about it. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Good luck. Thank you very much.